starting in T minus three, <clears throat> live in two, and one. Hey, listeners, and a special hey, hi, hello to all you Patreons out there. If you are a patron, if you are a patron, it means you have committed to giving $1, $2, maybe even $5 a month to support the lovely Wallen family as we continue delivering black science fiction and fantasy. Also, if you're a patron, we give away a book each month. So at the top of the March month, or March, I think it's March 2nd, we will be giving away the book Black Leopard, Red Wolf. It's also the book that we'll be covering today, which has a part one and a part two. Um, if you are interested in joining the Patreon, you can find the link in the episode notes. Uh, I don't think I have anything to add. Yeah. Now let's get started with the show. Welcome to the Sci-Fi Sci under the Believe Podcast Network. It's a podcast about black science fiction and fantasy and staying on the same page of our marriage. Today is episode 71, and we'll be starting the two-part series discussing the novel Black Leopard, Red Wolf, written by Marlon James. So like I said earlier, we're going to be discussing part one, a dog, a cat, a wolf, a fox, and then later, we're well, not significantly later, in the next week. No, 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 sorry, uh, so there's five parts to the book. Okay. And we're discovering part one and part two for our discussion today. Right. Well, I mean, I'm literally reading what you wrote. Right, right. So, I read it, but I'm reading what so you wrote. So we'll be discussing the first two parts in the book. Part one, a dog, a cat, a wolf, and a fox. And then part two, Malikin. So you were saying, you were about to say next week we're, disco- we're okay, discussing so, part two. Well, all right. I, so, see, I see now. See we're, we're breaking the book into two separate episodes yes episode one of this will will cover part one and two yes episode two of this will cover the rest of the book part three four and five right so if you read with us you read part one and part two correct <sighs> that, that's confusing when I, one of our patreons last week was like uh this is confusing and i realize yes it, it is so the well, book you wrote it so let's keep <laughs> going <laughs> It is confusing. That's why I was like, pages one through two forty two. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because the only problem is that sometimes people have different editions. Right. And so the pages don't match up. And so if you if you open up your the book, right? I'll you know, I'm ha- I have the book right here, which is a lot of things. So we have like part one: a dog, a cat, a wolf, and a fox. Why don't you show that to uh, one of those cameras? Yeah. So right, right, right. So that's part one, and there's Cute. five of these parts. And because some parts are longer than others, we just covered the first two parts, which is a little bit less than half the book. Right. Shout out to all the people who are like, listen, I don't care. I'm not reading. I'm just listening. And we appreciate you for being here. Well, well. communication is difficult with us sometimes, you know, especially when it comes to numbers. I'm very clear. I think for you, you are always clear to you. I feel like if there's a choice between who's clear and who's not, it's it's typically me. Right. Of course, obviously, you. you're going to make that decision because you are you. I think even when it comes to like how someone's feeling emotionally about something, I'm very I I clearly articulate to you how I feel about most things. You, whereas you'll mull you over that, it. You say that like it's like that's a plus. It is a plus because sometimes I can't get a read for something you want to do, and then later you're the person that's like, "Hey, do you want to take a left or a right?" And you're like. I mean, we could take a left. I, I don't know. Maybe we should take a right. You like, could also make, go straight. Just too. make a decision. Mm-hmm. Right, right. You're, you're like, well, we could also turn around and get off this trail. Yeah, we could take and then I'll be like, make a make a decision, Ben. And then you'll be like, all right, let's go left. I'm like, cool, we went left. And you're like, all right, we should have went oh, right. We should, yeah, it, you see how that's unclear? That's not. That's indecisive, not you, unclear. You're both. I'm, I, I'm clearly undecisive. Yes, you are. Well, we're already kind of checking in. Let's let's bring some lighthearted because we actually did have like a pretty solid weekend. Together. It was great. Let's uh, actually talk about th- buying things that you don't need, but you just want. Mm-mm-mm. Well, yeah, that was our How one you- argument today. It was. It sort of, you know, took down the mood. How do you decide what you need and what you want? And it- is there a difference? Like you need food. Right. I think a need is especially or or so- even a-, a convenience is something that will be used more times than it's not so today you wanted to go buy a new pair of indoor shoes that's that makes sense it's like 
you want your feet to be comfortable when you're teaching. You're on your feet a lot. Yep. You're in that stage where you're helping me out a lot now because I'm so pregnant. And so that makes and, sense. And, and being in Chicago, you, there's so much salt on the streets that you have. Everyone needs boots. Even our dog needs boots because his little paws will get like raw. And there's actually lotion <laughs> for like dogs with raw paws. Because of the salt, mm. it like eats into their skin. It's right. awful. And so I, as teachers who are working in schools that are barely clean, um, I try to do all I can not to track extra stuff. So Correct. I, I have indoor, like nice, nice running shoes to deal with. Be, Where are you, know, you going to leave those shoes? Uh, those shoes? Oh, I leave them at the school. Okay. Yeah, I leave them at the school. I have a little area that I, you know, store deodorant. Because I get sweaty. I, I don't really sit down when I teach. I'm constantly moving around. Sort of like you. I can't believe when you were teaching, Amber. I was up and at them. But also you wore like flats and shit. You didn't wear insoles. Like I'm surprised. I'm surprised. I'm surprised that your feet, like you don't have, a, you know, more foot feet problems. This right foot is like the one. But I, going back to your original question, I do see that like any sort of pain management or, um, comfort that you'll daily use i see that as a need so today you spent you went in to get one pair of shoes you got three well I and i and i and i i was like okay that's fine and then we went you went to the guitar center to just get the strings changed which you told me was going to cost 40 bucks i was like fine and then you came back out and you were like well the guy inside says i should just get rid of this and i should just get a new guitar altogether now wait a damn minute Now, wait a minute. You got a baby on the way. We still ain't got a stroller. Like, the, we put the some car. big ticket items yeah, on the, the registry the that are group gifting, but they ha we haven't gotten We don't have a car seat yet. We don't have a stroller yet. So, and, and you still need to pay for some auto body work on the car from the time that you, you know, backed in like the group that you are. <laughs> I want so, a new guitar. And you don't play guitar every day. You're not in I a do. band. I do play. You also have a violin and you also have an electric guitar. And you also have lightsabers that have now batteries died and are now collecting dust in the closet. So let's talk about it, Andy from Toy Story. You let you buy toys and then they sit under the bed and they talk to each other. <laughs> True or false? I'm bringing one of the lightsabers to my nephews so they'll get that and then i'm gonna hang up um i have these little like thing to hang up my other lights i can't even get you to write your family a thank you card okay. for the gifts they gave what you mean you gonna send a lightsaber <sighs> okay so let's move on to the next discussion <laughs> um, if you do all that stuff and we still have money left you can get a guitar but thanks, not a day thanks, later mom. I'm, I'm sorry my wife thanks wife now you know it don't make no sense i know it didn't then you were mad. I wasn't mad. I was just like, now wait a damn minute. You just spent like a pretty penny. You went in for one pair of shoes. You got three. And now you want a brand new guitar. Okay, so I needed. Who I look like? Chris Kringle? No. <laughs> You're sorry. Now the quiet and the competition is out. Just direct to. <laughs> uh, Amber, uh, we just came back from a staycation. Right. I got that cost money, too. I had a doctor's appointment on Friday, so I got to take off the day to get my glasses. <laughs> I had to get my glasses. Is that what the kids I, are calling yeah. it? A doctor's appointment. Yes. Oh, okay. And then we did a little bit of staycation because we're going to be. I mean, you're already sort of bedridden. Oh, shit. And house ridden. Oh, you're don't house do ridden. Me. You don't need the house. house. I cannot. There's so much so salt and ice. snow. I actually did slip and fall recently. I was, I was like, I can't leave. You, you fell hard. I did. And I was I'm like, okay. why are you moving something? Well, because when I ask you to do it, you don't want to do it. That's not but true. But you want to well, run to Guitar Center to get a new guitar. <laughs> That's not true. I do the things you do ask yeah, me. You do most Just things. not in the time that you want it. And yeah, usually, you have no sense of urgency. You're like, boom, boom. And I was like, all right, I'll get to it. You know, I'm sort of like go by the flow, you know, just very, I'm a very chill person where Amber's like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Uh, well, some things are more urgent than others. And I, and, mm -hmm. and I don't think you do the best job separating like, hmm, what needs are urgent? Okay, a dog need, needing to be taken out and walked in the morning is urgent I, or been, urgent to I've me been pretty, versus I've been, not. Yeah, I've you have. I'm just saying that's an that. example of like sure. writing your parents thank you cards for registry gifts is, versus a dog walking out. 
one of those is more urgent than the other. That's fair. I, they're not, they're both important, but one of them's more urgent than the other. That is, that is true. So you've you've just needed a little time out of the house, mm-hmm. uh, and so we went to Capricorn, and uh, I spoke on five panels. Uh, Amber <laughs> spoke on one with me. I did my one, and yeah. uh, we you know we will sort of hopefully you know create an episode of that it was on Janelle Monet. But I think the great thing about this is that you, um, you didn't really want to go to this, right? Like talk, you don't, you don't really want to do Capricorn, right? You didn't want to go to the science fiction convention. It's not that Ben. I just am, I am admittedly a control freak. And yeah. when some things are out of my locus of control, I get anxious about that like i told you i was like i don't know how many people are going to be there i don't know if somebody's going to try to touch my belly you planned the whole thing so you know how that can go like (laughs) you remember how you remember how one time we went camping i'm sure there's like an old episode where we talked about it where you were like i went camping all the time as a kid and i'm like well i've never been camping so this is this whole experience is out of my control and I have to solely rely on you sure. to fully prep me for the camping experience. Sure. And, and it, when we got there, would, what did you say? I should have, I should have brought no, this it, and this and this. And it, you're just like, I get it. I get it. <laughs> okay. Yes. We, we actually already talked about this on, okay. My point, I, I would prefer to rehash it right now. My point is that you end up having a really good time. I did. You, you, you did a great job. You're actually bedridden written in a hotel instead of the house <laughs> i had some quiet time to myself it, it was, was very nice because when you went to the panels i tried to come to the tail end of a panel or two that you were doing but you were telling me like don't come i just want to like network yeah. with these people and so we do spend so much time together i spend so much time with gucci which he's a treat but like i i am so accustomed to hearing him bark so loudly every mm. time I, there's a door knock or a Amazon buzzer that it was so nice to have a concierge or a bellman like knock on our door and not immediately be like like my ears are hijacked yeah. with his bark. Um, so it was really nice. to. This weekend was very much so like, oh, my gosh, the only person that I hear is me. And I'm very loving this experience right now, you know. It was, it was awesome. It was wonderful. You and, did a, an incredible job. I was I wrong in, about all of my fears. And I ran and got you food. Uh, we ended up going to a pajama party. We had friends. So we're like, we're staying downtown. We're like 10 minutes from our house, you know, 15 minutes. Uh, one of, one of my, fr- one of our friends, Victoria, more my friend. Um, mm-hmm. uh, she cool though. I, I love yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I didn't mean that in a shady way. No, it's just, I don't really have a lot of friends that right. are just my friends, you know? <laughs> That's very true. Uh, that, that I hang out with regularly. So, you know, Victoria, shout out to Victoria. Um, she, we, we hang out pretty regularly. Mm-hmm. And uh, so she watched Gucci. So that I organized that. Usually you, you do did. all the organizing. You organized dog care. And uh, so that was fucking awesome. You valeted me everywhere. I did. It was great. You did great. a great job. I, did. I took care of everything. You didn't pick up anything. I didn't. I didn't I, lift a finger. You this, took care of me. You even put my shoes on. Yeah. And it was funny when we came back, um, I was, you know, I had, we had stuff in the, you know, wires and, you know, bags of other things, computers. And, you know, Amber was like trying to take something. I was like, no, you go up the stairs. Your main job is just to go up the stairs. And that was hard for you right yeah it's like hard for you to to allow me to serve you and to support you very because you're a stubborn independent woman yeah i just i don't want to be a burden to people and i i don't want to feel completely helpless and obsolete but it was really nice having you completely support me this weekend it was it was you awesome good job. you just wanted to toot your own horn there i did. You did a great job speaking of horn tooting what's that ben what we got oh man we have so many amazing apple podcast ratings we got four new ones. This one, I'll read this one. Love, love, love. Uh, this is from Oh Sheesh, y'all, uh, via Apple Podcasts. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, saying, I can say for sure, this is the first podcast that I ever binged from the very beginning. I found y'all on TikTok and saw you at a sci-fi podcast and had to listen. Love the Amber and Ben dynamic. Keep up the amazing work. Oh. It's so impressive that people binge from the beginning. Yeah. I'd never do that with new podcasts I that I start. Because the first 10 are just shit. You're, <laughs> right. like, you're learning how to do, <laughs> unless it's like NPR or professionally produced. But yeah. we are not professional podcasters or sound engineers right. at all. So people listening to those, I'm like, God bless you. 
Um, keep doing your thing. This is from Indy.m. Indy.m says, I love you guys. Congratulations on 70. Yes, 70 episodes. I love watching you guys on YouTube and TikTok. TikTok. The podcast has opened my eyes to a whole new world of books. I didn't even try sci-fi because of the lack of representation. Yes. But thanks to you, my guy, my world has gotten a whole wider. Happy Black History Month. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Keep the love. I, I I have no problem just stroking our egos. Yeah, right we now. we yeah. Just please write us podcast ratings. We need them <laughs> so bad. And in all seriousness, they do help other people discover the show. Um, and it does make us feel good. It feel it makes us feel really great. Uh, way into everything about this is the next one from Cheddar Cheese Please Three. Love that. Y'all have done something special with this project. It's unique, interesting, human, and hilarious. The content you cover is stuff that goes so easily neglected by so many people, and it's amazing that you've used your platform to center these work. From my little podcast, The Garbage Barge, to yours, well freaking done. Keep up the amazing work. Shout out to The Garbage Barge. Thank you so much check for, that out. for this. Yeah, just oh, all the love. It, it makes me feel, um, you know, that I have worth. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to let you read this last one, and then I'm going to talk to you about, like, how I had like one troll this weekend who was so irrelevant that I was like, I have one troll for every 50,000 people that love us. Like yeah. this actually, this make this tracks. I'm like, surprised we don't have this. more. We do. I just don't read them. Oh. Or, well, you read them all. I like, I mean, but we don't have a lot of people saying negative things. We don't. I Something's wish we had up. some more negativity. I know. I'm, I'm fine with the, because when it's negative, it's like, whoa, relax. Like yeah. I literally had somebody <laughs> DMing me being, you know, uh, we're just read that. No, no, I'll, I'll, I'll read I'll this one. A second. This is a uh, best duo to ever do it. This is from Dawa two four seven. Y'all are amazing. Thank you for the import of it. And, and oh, speaking in tongues. All right. Thank you for the informative yet engaging and often funny content. P.S. We hashtag Team Bench. Yes, in this household. LOL. All jokes. Have a blessed day. Ooh. You have one fan out there. That's Hashtag good. Team Ben. People oh actually love Dawa247247. 20, thank you uh, for seeing who's the more valuable one in this relationship. Uh, <laughs> no, keep going. I'm going to let you finish. I'm no, I'm finish. done. I'm done. You deserve a fan. Uh, oh, wow. I have a fan. Okay. I, I mean, I, I mean, obviously, I'm hashtag Team Ben as well. I, I, I'm your number one fan. You are. I'm your well, I'm your not. number one fan too. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Well, speaking of people who aren't our fans, I had someone. So maybe two or three weeks ago, I had uh, I posted a pretty vulnerable TikTok video about just like the lack of representation and baby products and just all of these like mommy materials. Like every doctor's appointment, you just see like white moms everywhere. And I've seen like an advertising. You're saying in advertising. Of, yeah. And I've definitely seen, you know, like that one medical student who drew like a black body and that shook the table as well. And um, how, you know, some brands are trying to do better, but some just aren't. And someone, I mean, paragraphs in my DMs, I deleted it so fast, but I just remember saying things that said stuff like, like you are represented, like the father of your child is white and you should be so lucky that your child's going to have a white father. It was just like. Facts. Wow. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, Okay. <laughs> this is the part this is what I, this is the teaser that i'm gonna leave on tiktok and we'll see how many people are team ben then <laughs> it's like completely out of context i, I guess like um, what what would compel someone to be so vitriolically like racist like you, you, well they're the people that are just like you're the uh, reason like it, it keep it, you drawing attention to these issues is dividing us further. Oh, you can go you eat are, a bag of uncircumcised dicks. <laughs> you know, fuck you. You yeah, know, like, actually just all eat of a that. bag of foreskins. You it was, fucking piece of shit. Well, that's shit. how they tell on themselves because they use the like the language of like you're the person that's air quote like divisive. You're the person that like you're part of the problem. Like. We as white people don't even care that white people are only on products. It's like you're so fucking stupid. <laughs> see, do, see, I don't, I don't even want to give them any airtime. But I was just saying, like, know, that yeah, was fair. the first time in a long time that I had a a direct message of paragraphs of text. Of just, I know it's like in months. 
So I'm doing pretty well. There's always an avatar of like who hurt you. No. It's sort of the thing I to make you so mean to other people. Like who who really hurt you? Yeah, that's yeah. sort of you can tell that they're more hurt than yeah, they are angry at me. They're like a hurt person. So someone like really close. Which well, they're is not why. even a real person. It's like zero posts. A picture of some wildflowers. It's 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 a twelve year old child somewhere in this world. Um, but anyway, would you like to take a quick break? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. All right, let's take a quick break. She's back. We're, We're back. back. We're back. All right, let's talk about the actual book because we are, you know, per usual all over the place. Go ahead. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, black Leopard and Red red Wolf. Is Say it with some, some... Black Leopard, Red Wolf by Marlon James. So good. It is a great African fantasy on the level of George R. R. Martin, J.R. Tolkien, all of that. And it sort of builds off of this sword and soul that we've talked about before on this um, podcast. But uh, I think a lot of sword and sorcery or sword and soul has a lot of a lot more uh, hyper-masculinity. So think of like Conan the Barbarian, you, you know, the Arnold Schwarzenegger. I know who you know, Conan like, the Barbarian well, is. Like that big muscle. But there's something a little... Oh, you're... Oh, yeah, it is, it is recording. There's something a little bit different going on here mm-hmm. where uh, the main character in this tracker Tracker is not like the person of myth, right? Like he's the one telling the story. So in that way, it becomes a much more deeper kind of fantasy. I wouldn't put it on the same level of like a lot of sword and soul or sword and sorcery. Because the, it, the story's being told about the characters. And yeah, yeah, and it also sort of deconstructs that hyper-masculinity. I mean, obviously, there's a conversation happening with Sword and Soul. Uh, and obviously, Marlon James has read Sword and Soul. But I think there's a larger um, thing going on here. Yeah. So, does, so are you implying that when a character is telling their own story, that it's a bit more vulnerable and, yeah. and so less hyper-masculine. Okay. Right. But but not only that. I thought about it like that. Yeah. I, and that wasn't my original idea. I'll put an article in here that I read that sort of gave me that I that gave me that idea. But it isn't, I mean, Tracker, the main character in this, isn't the stuff of myth, right? He is, he has problems. He is vulnerable. He goes through a really horrific, awful um, rape. Uh, in childhood and 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 no and not in uh oh yeah and he has a hard childhood as well yeah so all of this so i think there's something much more going on Mm -hmm. and um sort of it it is is the background of this or the it would fall into like african fantasy or maybe sword and sorcery slash what we call sword and soul when it's um elements of sword and sorcery are put in a african context yeah give a quick little that was a good summary. Right. Give give a sorry. That was a great background. Give a quick little summary. Yeah. Uh. Yes. Yeah. So the summary is. Uh. Oh yeah. Wait. Before I do that, like, let's talk a little bit about Marlon James for a second. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because. Leave that. Yeah. He he has a really great podcast called uh, Marlon and Jake Read Dead People, and he's a funny dude. Mm-hmm. Like he is just very down to earth. He's a professor, and he's nothing like the kind of person I would have imagined writing this kind of epic science, this epic yeah. fantasy, right? Isn't like, that like pretentious? Yeah. And like, like my writing is, a, 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 yeah, I don't, no, I don't he, know how I imagine funny. writers like by the fire, sipping on an old fashioned. He's very much so like, at this point I just wear dresses to fuck with people. Like, yeah, because he, gender's a fucking joke. Like he's <laughs> such a cool vibe. Mm-hmm. He is. And he's, he's very much into fashion as well. Like mm-hmm. a writer who's into fashion, he dresses up like he's, he like puts really nice clothes on to go and write because he's like, when I write, I go to work, right? And so he's just a very different kind of person where I'm sort of used to the kind of writers who are like, you know, I wear jeans, I hang out, and, um, you know, I'm very informal as far as my style, but he is stylish as fuck. Yeah. And he's just an absolute, like, joy um, that I you don't really see with a lot of writers, uh, especially, I would say, um, like cis uh men 
writers, right? Like there are, I feel like I've seen a lot of women writers who will dress like very chic and very edgy. chic and mm-hmm. edgy, like, you know, Toni Morrison or they've curated uh, their space. Yeah. Well. Where, mm-hmm. where I notice with a lot of men writers, it's like jeans, especially white. Like men they're writers. so unassuming. Like yeah. George R. R. Martin, like when I see pictures of him, you know, not to yeah. be shady boots because he's obviously done a lot, but yeah, he's not, like, he's not oh, into that's fashion. Some, that's just someone's grandpa just sitting but, in jeans. But also something that we've talked about uh, with us is that this, you know, I sort of look down on people who are in fashion, or I did, you know, like being, but it's art. Didn't you buy three shoes today? I did buy three For shoes. For comfort, though. For comfort, <laughs> which is not into fashion. But I think, you know. You sound like, I, uh, like that scene in. Meryl's. You know, yeah, that yeah, monologue the devil of like, oh, this product. is just funny. It's like something funny. Like, yeah. and she like does the you, whole you trickle love that. down you, of fashion. You like, have that whole monologue. Oh, you ma- think this has nothing to do with you. Yeah. You go to your closet yeah. and pick out, I don't know, that lumpy blue sweater. Because you think, you, 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 keep going. You used to admit, you had that memorized I at did. one point. I did. I'll go remember it. It's like, it's, that's but, really. But I think hanging out with you who you're very much like watching Drag Race and us talking about fashion and even, you know, looking at Met Gala pictures, you're like, oh, look at this, look at this. And I, you've started to make me appreciate more fashion yeah. as art and art not only, but also storytelling as well. And I think Correct. Marlon James' um, approach to fashion is just so wonderful in, juxtaposition, to, in juxt, juxtaposition of this African fantasy, like gory, sexy, violent kind of book. I just, I just find that absolutely delightful. I can so appreciate that. He just has... It, it makes sense because he has taste. His his writing has a very unique taste and his fashion has a very unique taste. And I can appreciate good taste. And I'll say this again, like, you know, I'm doing the Black History Month thing. It sucks because there were times where uh, me and the team of the girls who came over to help me judge who should be chosen, we were like, this is a good product, but it's tacky. <laughs> like, you know, and that sounds super shitty to say, but we're just very like, you know, not that you can look at my everyday get up and assume that, but when it comes to even our maternity photos, I'm like, I want something very editorial, you know, you I have want vision. open lighting. You I want vision. the composition yeah. to be right. Yes. You correct. absolutely have vision. 100%. And then, and you're like, well, do I have to go get a haircut? I'm just like, girl. Okay. I do not brush your teeth. I do not push back as much as I used to. Why don't you just keep talking about the book? So the summary <laughs> <laughs> of what we read so far. Uh, so the story follows like a tracker it's, because you're listening to the audio The audio book. Right? Every time the, the author says, the, the, whoever is reading the book, they're like, and then track off. <laughs> so it's, every time I'm going to say the name like that. Keep going. Sorry. So uh, the book follows tracker, aptly named tracker. He had a name that is mentioned, but he doesn't go by that name. He's rejected his family. And he has a nose, one of a kind, this almost magical nose in which he can even find a lost soul in the underworld and bring them back, which is, you know, a whole scene. Very, very cool. Very Encanto, too. That's yeah. Very, like, it's like she has that hearing thing, but. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's exactly. That's like the It movie right now. So that made me think a lot about that when we were reading it. Yes, yes. No, that. It's, it's like, like a superpower. Like, I think I that's can, a good way yes, of putting yes. it. Yes, she's yep. like, I can hear everything these motherfuckers mm-hmm. are talking about. Yep, exactly. The character in, in, in Canto. Uh, so anyway, Tracker is hired to find a mysterious boy that has this unknown and like enormous value to a particular slaver in this world, Amadu Kasawara, who is the slaver. And so he joins these team uh, to go find this boy, and it sort of follows... Uh, their journey and so we some of the people on the team is leopard who's a shape-shifting hunter and then fumeli which is his bowman uh nika a skin-shedding mercenary and both leopard and nika were uh, trackers lovers at point so it's a very like gay you know queer friendly oh it's very um, gay vibes yeah uh you know i think a lot of uh like the queer community 100 percent sees themselves in in this book uh Mm -hmm. and uh who else do we got we have uh the sangoma a divinatory healer who protects cast out children and casts a protective charm on tracker uh and then there's a a moon witch named sogalone there's a giant called ogo it's a bunch of mother it's it's a whole family reunion of motherfuckers it's like marvel cinematic (laughs) universe and i think um 
that was sort of explained in the back of this book is that he's built he's built a universe with he this. Has. He's he's writing multiple books. The reason we're even doing this is that in February he's coming out with the sequel. So I I've been wanting to read this book for a while. You know, it was a national book um award um you know finalists and so it's got a lot of detention it's going to be made into like a series yeah michael b jordan just bought the rights to it so, in, fi- in in 2019 so it's it's coming my friends which i love because it is very uh it, it's very hyper masculine like this is why he likes to fuck with you right mm-hmm. he's the person that's super hype like hyper masculine and wearing the dress in the room um and he's like these these are like warriors and heroes and they're all gay and or i don't know if they would identify as gay but they have sex with each other Mm -hmm. um and love on each other which you know sometimes i i i don't want to just like i know in america we'll be like but that's just gay right whereas i remember i took this lesbian and gay studies class in um college this is a quick aside and i there was a guy in there who was like brazilian or something and he's like all of my friends are guys and they've all had sex with guys, but we wouldn't call ourselves gay. Mm. You know, it's, it's just a very different culture where in the U S it's like, if you looked at a guy's penis, it's like, you're gay, blah, 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 nah, 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 nah. you know? So I don't know. Maybe there's a thing like where in other countries it's like, or maybe that person was super progressive. It was also a lesbian and gay studies class, but he was just like, I know tons of people that have men that have had sex with men that wouldn't just like identify as gay. Like, that's just like a sexual experience they had the one time or whatever. Right. Yeah. But in this book, so I, I'm saying in this book, I don't know if people are like, I exclusively fuck men or if it's, or if it's kind of like, like not prison, but like, you know, there are men who are in prison that are like, I'm incarcerated. So obviously I'm a human being. I'm having sex with people. I don't really consider myself gay, but like mm-hmm. <laughs> here is who is here right now. So I'm like surviving. I don't know. What do you think about what I just said? Uh, I think we don't have enough time to tease all that out. Okay. But, but specifically for the book, to have sex, to be a man and have sex with other men, there are certain tribes in the book that um, describe that in derogatory terms. So it's not just hmm. like a blanketly okay. accepted kind right. of thing within this world. Because um, at one point, Chereka has sex with a woman. Yeah. No, yeah, so I think he, the character... So this idea of like labeling by you know right. or gay, it, Marlon James just doesn't do yeah, that. Yeah, he doesn't. Yeah, or like even there are um, these where uh, these wear hyenas, but they are trans, so they are women, and they are described of ha- of having penises, but he doesn't like use the term trans, right? Mm-hmm. He he's using different language. But that it almost gender transcends and sex- it all. Yeah, it it. Uh, you remember when we watched that he, like he protects- Walter Mercado documentary, and they're like, "Is he gay? Is he straight? Is he whatever?" And it's like he's above sexuality. <laughs> like yeah. this man is an entity and uh, like a sublime medium of sort. Yeah. Like this is not even about like we can't have such menial conversations as sexuality and gender with this because it's so fantastical. And maybe that's what we're tapping into here. Well, yeah, and I think Marlon James' decision to, like, fuck with gender, and he's avoiding these terms, like, this is gay, this is trans, this is bi, uh, I think does a service and also sort of protects him as as a writer to describe, like, individual situations. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's uh, the other... And that all comes into his like genius world building. Like one of the most mm-hmm. powerful parts of this is his world building. Uh, one of the things I actually learned how to read maps was reading Lord of the Rings because it had a Aww. map in there that made me want to learn how to read a map. And I'm, I'm always thinking like a lot of my students learn how to read maps from playing Fortnite or Minecraft. And the idea of forcing kids to learn map reading through the, you know, learning the United States well, sure, you can do that, but the skills of map reading are transferable even to a fantastical world. And so I had a lot of fun just like looking at these maps and, you know, remembering that time of learning how to read maps and sort of, again, goes into his like genius world building. Um, how did you learn how to read maps? Was it reading Lord of the Rings? <laughs> no, um, I still don't know how to read maps. That is quite profound what you just said um i think that 
I don't read maps. Like I, we <laughs> we had GPS, we had Garmin. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, maybe, and I ne- I didn't read high fantasy as a kid. So it was you who taught me. If you're confused, there's a map at the front of the book, and I was like, oh. <laughs> so I learned how to read maps from you. I think also, but it's also helpful when your GPS gets lost in no, there's we just a part be of, lost in yeah. Lower Wacker. No, because I can. I was like, oh, I gotta zoom out. Even today, we we're driving in Lower Wacker. We we're sort of, you know, downtown and get a little confusing when you're trying to find a specific hotel. So I was like, oh, just zoom out, and I immediately knew <laughs> where we were. And that actually came from studying science fiction, fantasy, or specifically fantasy, high fantasy maps i mean it's something i didn't even have to worry about or think about until i moved to chicago yeah, where i, I would ask Athens. people like yo where's blank and they're like just head towards the lake and i'm like how do you figure um out? here's the thing girl where's the <laughs> like i i, I just moved north, here south east yes west. whereas now i'm like okay red line runs up and down green line runs yeah. west and like that that's the lake is always going to be east Right. That's honestly like living in Chicago is, and, and riding the trains has honestly been how I've learned to read maps. So I'll say like you and just becoming a, a city gal. Did you ever play Pokemon growing up? No. Or like any but sort Aaron of video game? Aaron was really big into it. That's my brother. Because you know. map, maps are also a big part of that. Well, anyway, the great thing about this story is that there are tons of freaking monsters. Talking yeah. about world building. Like, oh, just we, we mentioned the were hyenas. There's these like really, there's this like consuming spidery thing called Asabosum, the flesh eater, and then there's Sasabone Sam, the blood sucker, which we haven't gotten to just yet. We got to Asabosum, where uh, this Asabosum captures people and like eats them in this cave. And the description, uh, Marlon James' writing is just beautiful but he describes this monster breath uh, in this way i'm going to read this and this his breath fowler fowler than corpse rot fowler than the shit of the sick like oh my god he he has these like beautiful ways of describing really disturbing um uh, elements uh, that i i just find absolutely delightful especially with the monsters he does and um I there is this level of African folklore that I can really appreciate. Like I love all of the, you know, as a Southerner, I really love any of the like turn, not turn of phrases, but just like the African proverbs, I should say. Like I I knew I was going to love this book on the first page when it was something that said it was like not everything the eye sees should be spoken by the mouth. Mm. And I was like, damn. Some of these TikTokers need this <laughs> this <laughs> quote, but everything was like that. And um, there were a couple of stories that he told. I remember ve- in the very be- beginning. Well, one I love that Trucko's superpower is his sense of smell because I remember like when I first got pregnant, <laughs> having like a heightened sense. I mean, I could smell Ben hit the fucking door like he just reeks, you know. And so I, I was thinking about like how annoying it would be if your superpower was having a big sense of smell. Obviously, like sometimes it would be great because you're like, oh, like like in the book, especially track is like, oh, I can smell blood like somebody's being killed right now or I can hunt somebody down. Or even when we were watching, spoiler alert, The Good Dinosaur this little critter had a really strong sense of smell and could smell mm-hmm. things yep. miles and miles away from each other. So I think that's really cool. But when something repulsive is happening, I'm laughing at an incident that happened between you and I earlier today when something nasty is being smelled. You're like, Oh my gosh. Like I cannot get this, like this yeah. putrid foul smell out of my nose. And uh, Traka as a kid would be he was like when I would go places I would have to like cover my nose like at a spice market or something because yeah. it was so overwhelming so I really loved how that was described because I mean we've seen it all as far as like superhero powers right like we invisibility and flight and things like that but like in Kanto and and this book are the first times we're seeing like no one of your five senses could just be heightened and that's a superpower which I really loved um, uh, like Daredevil Daredevil. Daredevil is another one, but, but it's not just what, okay, let's talk. We'll, we'll talk for two seconds about Daredevil. Yes. He's, Uh, Oh no, no. Right. Don't. Yes. He is blind, but what other one sense is like all of them hearing. I know, but 
Like, I, I see that, but he also has, like, weapons and shit, you know? Like, doesn't his, like, uh, his guiding stick turn into something? Yeah, but his superpower is all his other senses are extremely heightened. Yeah, but in African folklore, only one other sense can be heightened. It's like, I'm a superhero. Like, that's all I needed. Literally, my sense of smell is is all I need. Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be touch and taste and whatever. Yeah. Like, I, I, I really appreciated that. And there was also a story at the beginning of this, um, if you read with us, where there's this, so, so, Traka is a bounty hunter, right? So, you know, a woman loses her husband and is like, yo, go find my man. Like, he's been missing for days. I don't know if he's dead. I don't know if he's alive. And Trekker, like, automatically knows, like, oh, he's alive. I smell him or whatever. Or, or give me something in this room, his T-shirt or something that smells like him. So I, I'm just always like, oh, my God, is Trekker going to find him or not? Which is great because you're all, you're like, we should watch Boba Fett, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, this is good. This is a, this is a bounty hunter story that I'm enjoying. And so this one story uh tracker goes to find somebody's husband and that husband is like at the bottom of the ocean or a bottom of a river or a tributary basically in the underworld yeah it's like like atlantis like had he had killed himself he had drowned himself because his wife was so mean to him (laughs) which i don't know maybe you can learn something amber (laughs) and i would call tracker to go pull you out of lake michigan right and so it was just funny to be like and then track like tracker finds this guy underwater and is like you know, having a bubbly conversation like, yo, I was paid to send your ass the fuck back. Like, we going back. And so, there, sh- yeah, go ahead. Well, <laughs> well, this is sort of perfectly, that scene you're describing early in the book sort of perfectly describes Tracker, where he's not going to have this argument um, with this this man he's been, you know. Co- like, I'm not arguing with co- you. I got Commission to, to right. collect. And uh, just, it, this is all within a frame story. So narratively, it's very confusing and it's intentionally confusing. Very. So we did not say that Tracker is telling all the stories to an inquisitor. Right. Like in an is, interrogation room. And it, yeah. And we don't really know anything about this interrogation room. It's hinted throughout the book that there are a North and South kingdom and there's this, you know, brooding war that's going to happen. Uh, so, yeah, we are very confused at some certain parts, but I found myself being like, you know what? I don't care if I know where chronologically this is happening. I can really appreciate a story of a husband yes. running and drowning himself and not dying, but then like his soul living in this underwater Atlantis yep. and then Traka going to find him, bring him back. And then the guy still like after Tracker commissions him is commissioned to go find this guy. Like the guy still re- finds a way to like run away from his wife again and, and drown himself and drown himself again, which yeah. was just like, learn something, Amber, learn you drown yourself. No. I mean, if you're happy down there with those mermaids, like what no, am I going to do? Just don't. Yeah. Don't, don't be mean to me. But anyway, so tracker at one point says, uh, there's nothing I fight for and nothing I will fight over. So waste none of my time starting fights, raise your fist and I will break it. Raise your tongue and I will cut it out of your mouth. That's exactly what who Tracker is, right? Tracker. He he's very similar to Geralt of Rivia in some ways. Who girl? Uh from The Witcher. So like he's hired to do a job and Geralt of Rivia goes, kills the monster, gets his pay, moves on. That's sort of how Tracker lives his life. Um and uh, until there are certain moments where he gets a tr- uh, you know attached to certain people or he gets attached to certain places and he does get his his heart broken. One he's of the, also really witty too. Like he he's is kind of a smart ass. He's, they say they're constantly saying you know they you have a tongue on you. Yeah, right. Like, you know, have, oh, you're not just a nose. You got a quick tongue. Yeah. I, you, so I, yeah. I I can really appreciate Trump that is because that's he's sort probably of like had to deal with so much bullshit. It's like. I'm capturing people who were either taken or ran away or tried to, I mean, yeah. The, the other really cool monsters in here are the Omolos, the Omoluzu. They're like roof walking night demons from an age before this age. Classic. Very creepy. But at one point they're like hunting this witch, uh, and this witch, um, or this, uh, I don't know. Anti-witch. Yeah, Bunchy, Bunchy. And anyway, to like save this little boy, yeah, this she, little I think p- she's like a shapeshifter, but she cuts open her stomach mm. and puts the boy inside her womb. 
And hides them. And little. hides them. So there's all these vignettes, all this storytelling that goes on. And like, and it all is these just. flip of the tropes. Mm. Oh, it is really like. It, it gets th- gritty at some point. There's points. some I'm really. I'm like, whoa, this, um, this very bloody scene is going on for pages, huh, Marlon? <laughs> uh, the other are the Bolta, the Boltengen, where, where hyenas, which is like a traditional, that's a unique traditional African folk folklore. And a tracker in one of his journeys, many ad- adventures, he kills one of the were hyenas and they capture him and they like rape him for days on like days on days on days. And that was like a very, very hard yeah. scene to read. So just like y- you might have to skip uh, like skip some parts mm-hmm. um, and uh, track off. Also yeah. had a really rough tra- childhood as well. Just mm-hmm. like a very... Like he kind of he has this pretty aggressive, abusive father who just like one time even hit his brother so hard in the head that he was like funny after yeah, that. That's became, what the book called it. Yeah. Uh, but then he finds out that his dad is actually his grandfather. So there's some s- sort of additional like trauma happening with that and him finding like his mom is his sister or something. It, it, there's like levels to it. Yeah. So that, yeah, we can talk about the themes of this whole idea of like, who is your family is a big part of this. And so basically his actual, um, yeah, I think his, yeah, his father is killed. And so his grandfather then marries his mother and takes him away from the village in which his father was killed. And then sort of the beginning of the book deals with him. How does he address this trauma? And even like finding uh, it out. Yeah. And he, he ends up having to like kill his uncle. Um, partly because there's uh, these, the, they call them the Minji, which are children with disabilities or children who mm. are, you know, non-neurotypical or have skin conditions and they are considered curses. Mm-hmm. And so he ends up being part of this group um, where, where a, the, an anti-witch essentially is raising these children and in a very sad, depressing way, all the uh, different you know people from the village come, they kill the anti-witch witch, and like string up all this children besides like four of them. And so Tracker, you know, is traumatized by this event, but he's, he's really good at hiding his trauma. Yeah, uh, with so, the comedy and the... Yeah, and this is early in uh, Tracker's life where he's still learning how to use his superpower. And so he ends up taking these young children and, you know, dropping them off at a, at a different village. But I keep on... Uh, so that, again, goes into that world building, the the idea of the, the Minji, uh, children with disabilities and how they're mistreated. A sidebar on that. Have you ever found out, like, somebody in your family wasn't the connection that you were told that they were as a child. It doesn't have to be anything drastic, but you like, you know, you'd have like an uncle and they'd be like, Oh, they're roommates. And then as an adult, you're like, Oh, they were together or uh, oh, interesting. It, just anything like that. I, I have a couple of, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really understand. So my grandfather, you know, died when he was like 86. Okay. Something. And he had a friend, Virginia, but I thought, she, but I don't, but it wasn't really his friend. It was like his girlfriend. I didn't really understand that they huh. were like romantically involved. They didn't live together. Right. And I think Virginia wanted to get married to my grandfather, but he didn't. They used to go out dancing together. Oh. Uh, and I thought they were like friends, but I think I realized later that they were a little, a little bit more than just friends, you know? Yeah. I think, I, I think Virginia really loved my grandfather. And Grandpa Wallen was just playing. Uh, was a fuck boy. No, I think he really. You're like no. He really missed it. <laughs> he really missed Grandma. Oh. He really he loved couldn't. Grandma. Yeah. Uh, I never got to meet her. My my dad's mom, and he my dad would always tell me these uh, be- beautiful stories about his mom. Oh, I love yeah, that. Yeah, he he I I I really want you to hear stories about Grandma actually. I would love that. Yeah, I've never met her, but he the way my dad talks about her is just really beautiful. He brings her to life. Yeah, not like Tracker's story at all. Not like Tracker. Yeah. Tracker. Uh, I mean, we had a couple of things like that happen when I was a kid. Like, I have a um, an uncle who is like seven days 
older or younger than my dad. And I remember being like, what is up with this? And and then, you know, my Uncle Ken, who lives on the yeah. West Coast. And then later, my grandma was like, well, your grandpa cheated on me. And both of us were pregnant in the hospital at the same time. So he, you know, your father was born. And then he went down the hall because this other lady's baby was born or just stuff like that. Or when I worked in, when I was a high school college counselor for a year, and, you know, you're helping seniors go to college and fill out these documents about, like, who's your parent? Let's fill out your FAFSA, blah, blah, blah. I definitely had one parent that was like, you know, my son doesn't know this, but I'm actually not his biological father. I'm his uncle. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> so, uh, well, where do, do you want to tell him or not? He's like, well, he's going to find out because we have to fill out all this paperwork and I never legally adopted him. And now we're, he's 18. Wait, so his uncle was married to his mom so no they weren't together the i think it would i think it was a situation where like this great kid right had a mom who was a single mom and an uncle that was so present in place of his father was the uncle related to the mom no oh so the uncle was like the father's his father's brother yes Oh, okay, and his father it. was so not present. Maybe he was incarcerated. Maybe got he had passed it. away. Maybe he just decided so he wanted to like, raise his kid. Did they just pr- pretend that they were together at some point? Yeah, like, they were yeah. just like, I'm your dad. That's your mom. We don't live together. We're not in a relationship, but like we raise you. Yeah. Does okay. that make sense? It it does. But what would be the motivation behind so that the saying child that? can have like a, you know, you know how these like nuclear families are built. Like yeah. people are like. My, I live with my grandma, but that's kind of like my mom, mm-hmm. you know, but, but, but some young kids you, know that you that's my grandma. That, yeah, right, right, right. You would say that, but a high schooler not knowing that. Correct. Seems really deceptive. and A little bit. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe pretty, it was like a tax thing. I don't, I don't know. I didn't ask. I was just kind of like, there's, there's well. There sounds like more to that story. For sure. Yeah. I'm like, well, is he going to college or not? Like, what do we need to do to finesse this situation? But yeah, it's really interesting that sometimes people aren't told like, hey, this isn't your legal guardian or whatever. Cool. Or I would say, I, I should say something like, it would be like if Aunt May just told Peter so, Parker, like, I'm your mother. Which is fine. Like, and I know people who've been adopted by their aunt and uncle and they call both their, they call their aunt and uncle mom. But then they call, but they know that's not their mom, right? So you can you can say the name like, oh, thanks, dad. You can say that, yeah. but just. Come. But aren't you the person that's always like, you know, you're you're a father if you step up. If you're not, you're kind of like not the father. Right. Yes, I a hundred percent agree. Uh, but to, yeah, I guess like does it does it matter to understand like yeah? But then but that erases the story of the actual parents, right? Like it, it is important. I think to know the story Correct. of the parent and be like, you know, I'm not, I'm not your biological father, but I support you. The person, you know, who, who shares your genes and your DNA. I think that's important to know, right? It's yeah. important to know who that person was because those genes, that DNA is a part of you and you should, you, I think you have a right to know a little bit about that. So you, you can make predictions yeah. uh, of what you might or tendencies of what you might, right? Like if you understand that, your father was a musician, like your biological father was a musician or, or whatever, you know, it shakes your identity yeah. for sure. And, and that's something that, that, you know, to her, to, to harken back to the book, um, that truck experiences as he's trying to just learn who he is and, um, his superpowers. Yeah. So the, the part where we stopped off in the book is that tracker is looking for this boy and they've just crossed the dark lands which is a place where dangerous creatures live and time and distance are seemingly irrelevant. And I love, this is like a very standard trope in like fantasy. Uh, So for example, in the Bible, like great fantasy literature, uh, where Jesus goes out (laughs) into the wilderness and encounters encounters the, the, the devil, right? This is a very standard where you go through a, a wilderness kind of experience where the rules and the laws of nature start to be in, inverted or changed. Yeah, so this dark night of the soul, but also you see this when the fellowship in the Lord of the Rings has to go through the mines of Moria. Right, or, obviously, yeah. Or in the Wheel of Time, you know, the the final episode in the Wheel of Time where they have to go through the blight 
And so yeah, in every that. in every adventure, Amber, what's that moment of that dark night of the soul when you're going through your journey? What has been that period of time which felt like your dark land? You know, if you're on this great journey where where the logic just has all been inverted and changed and nothing makes sense. I think I know what it was for you, actually. Probably for most people. <laughs> what? <laughs> COVID. <laughs> I was like, you, you lobbed that one in there. Yeah. Getting laid off and then say, like, I, well, I was in a situation where we got, we we had a staff meeting. We were told like, hey, everybody's getting paid the next two weeks. We're going to see how this virus pans out. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Enjoy two weeks paid off. Like, we're going to recuperate. Like, we're going to, we're going to regroup in two weeks. And then two weeks came back and they were like, yeah, y'all are all laid off. We can't do it, girl. It's complete bullshit. I know. Well, I mean, I get it now, but the way that we were laid off was so weird. It was like, we all opened this meeting and the, the CEO of the company was like crying as she delivered the message. It's like, well, you're still on the payroll. So why don't you stop crying and just like deliver a message to the people that have worked for you for X amount of years? Because we, we cannot have a space in our hearts to feel bad for you right now. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. What about you? Cause you didn't get laid off. You're, no, I, I didn't. You're one of the three Americans that. Uh, I don't. Out. I don't know if I've hit that that dark lands, that journey in which that part of your journey where the logic enter wild kicking. Yeah, <laughs> maybe maybe parenthood. I don't know, uh, but yeah, I mean, I let's jump into like the size. I don't really have any size. I guess no, maybe. Either. I wish there was a timeline accompanied with all of these things, but maybe that would give away the, the end. I don't know. Yeah, I think the complexity, the time shifting, um, the stories are not told linear, linearly. Oh, that that word always gets you yeah. linearly. Linearly. They're not. The stories aren't linear. Yeah, it, there is a linear big <laughs> story, Track but off. what what will happen oftentimes is that two characters will have a conversation. And then one character will be reminded of a story and that per- one character will now tell a whole other short story. Yeah. It's like that recap episode of Saved by the Bell or whatever where yeah. you know, you're just like, we got all this content. How can we just like retell some episodes we've already done? Like, you know how like every season of whatever sitcom would do that. I didn't really watch TV like that. But oh, yeah. I, this, I don't think it's like that though. Cause I, because what they're doing is they're telling a completely new story. Got it. Right. Like the uh, what what's her name? Um, uh, Bunchy tells the story about how she cuts open her womb or then Tracker tells the story of while why he hates Nizub, who left him and betrayed him to the were hyenas Mm -hmm. or or Leopard tells a story about the little boy who now follows him after he saved him or all these. So they but they're long stories. Correct. And I I love that because that's how storytelling works. Like I. I will start telling you a story a long one too. about my past or about things that I hope for the future. But that's part of our shared narrative through through our, our day-to-day life. Yeah. And our day-to-day life often has, you know, future rem- future speculations and then reminiscent. So I, I guess maybe that's the only side. It can be confusing reading it. Right. Or hearing that from you. Yeah, that. <laughs> so you're actually reading word, yourself right wor- now. I'm words are hard. Uh, I'm just kidding. Well, then, with that being said, why don't you warp up the show, my love? All right. In conclusion, Black Leopard, Red Wolf will be as big of as Lord of the Rings, as Game of Thrones. Bigger, blacker. It will inspire cosplay, fan fiction, and entire fan sites exploring and predicting and debating all the characters and plots. I'm so excited to continue to read this. Uh, and so up next, we will be reading. No, you didn't. I, no, did go I ahead. Finish, you? finish the show, Dan. Damn, oh. I don't been laid off again. Now we talk about the Dark Lands again. Uh, uh, <laughs> up next, we'll be finishing Black Leopard, Red Wolf. We'll be reading part uh, three, part four, and part five. Good job. That will be the end. I think there might be a part six. How many? See, you can. Yeah, there the is. So we'll be part part, part three, three through four, six. But actually, part five is like two pages long, which is weird. So yeah, we'll read part three, part four, part five, part six. Just say three through six. Three through six. 
we'll finish, Damn. or I could just say we'll finish the book. Correct. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Sci-Fi Side Podcast. Ben just took away what I was going to say here. So be sure to finish reading parts three through six or just finish the goddamn book. Or you can listen to the audiobook where I love that it says Truck All every time it says his name. So we will see y'all next week for the show for episode 72. Bye, y'all.